Hi everyone, welcome to researchmd.com. We got a great presentation today. We are today another uh, statistical term or statistical test we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about a non-inferiority trial today. Okay, again, my name is Pramil Charyat. I'm a program director, internal medicine residency program, transitional residency program, also teach medical students and medical residents, and I'm also director of research. So let's get into our uh, topic. And uh, what is the definition of non-inferiority trial, right? Just like uh, the word itself means, uh, this, uh, when we do to um, an experiment, it's not worse than the treatment, it's not worse than the previous treatment, okay? Uh, so that is what means, non-inferiority, okay? It's also called active control trial. So let's say if you have like two drugs, and you're comparing two drugs, and then you're saying the effect of one drug is not inferior to the other drug. Okay, so it's also called, what is it called? Active control trial. So concept of non-inferiority trial is performed to demonstrate, again, like we said before, it's just trying to say the new treatment is um, the same or better than the assumed uh, treatment, okay? And um, the main difference is also, uh, let's say like if you use a placebo for this trial, right? That means we already know the treatment works with the other group, um, so it's unethical to do that, right? So let's say, like, I mean, a, a prime example, let's say uh, some people are taking aspirin and we have uh, shown that aspirin can prevent the coronary artery disease, right? And then if you want to compare the effect of aspirin to a new drug, you cannot just take the people off of the aspirin because those people is going to suffer. That's the unethical thing to do. So in that case, that's the main reason we're doing the non-inferiority trial, okay? Uh, and alternative, when the patient are not assigned to placebo, there's increasing emphasis on the use of non-inferiority trial designs. So um, when we talk about uh, uh, the concept we already analysis. When you do the analysis, um, the equivalence you know, the, in terms of clinical evaluation mean that effect of treat, uh, two treatment differ by no more than a tolerable amount or equivalence margin. So you, by doing the literature search, you can see what is the margin you want to set. You know, you want about like 15% difference or 20% difference. That's based on your all literature search and all that, okay? So non-inferiority trials aim to show that an experimental treatment is not less effective than the active control by more than, by comparing the equivalence margin. So you need to know that term a little bit. Um, and the determination on inferiority margin, again, this is the time like you need to do literature search, you need to do like previous studies, like what margin you have to set it, okay? You have to use both the statistics and your clinical uh, reasoning skill to come with the best um, uh, margin, I mean, uh, for the non-inferiority margin when you have to set it up. Um, we have a nice um, picture over here. Uh, so if you, look, uh, if you look on the left side, the, tra the treatment is much better. So the non-inferiority trial should combine the, our equivalence margin and the zero. So it is kind of 95 confidence interval is a non-inferiority. It should cover from zero to the equivalence margin you set up, okay? When you go above that equivalent margin, you can say it's a superiority trial if you want to, which is like a regular trial. So in this uh, picture kind of clinically kind of tell us what is the, you know, where do we set the margin, what is non-inferiority or not, okay? So sample size, I mean, usually you need a larger sample size for um, uh, this type of trial. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, or if the required samples can be reduced, if a new treatment is seemed to be slightly more effective in the active control to keep the confidence interval broader also. Um, selection of analysis, um, the recommended uh, approach is non to trials to do both intention to treat and uh, <clears throat> per protocol analysis and to conclude. So you, the current recommendation, you do intention to treat analysis and you also do per protocol analysis to conclude that uh, non-inferiority, okay? Selecting intention to treat or pre, uh, per protocol analysis myself may be conservative for non-inferiority trial as it tend to bias the results towards equivalence or superiority. So switching between superiority and non-inferiority. When you talk about superiority trial, pretty much you're doing the, in our regular fashion way. One treatment is much better than the other, right? Uh, the 95% of the confidence for interval for the treatment benefit exclude not only the non-inferiority margin, but it also zero, just like we showed in our graph. 
it will be considered adequate evidence to prove superiority within the same trial. So it should, the equivalence margin, it should kind of go above that, okay? So um, again, we have this um, equivalence margin. You can see the, where the superiority is demonstrated. Uh, it's far ahead. Um, it's not touching the zero, but it's crossing the equivalence margin uh, clearly on that. Remember that. In conclusion, uh, non-inferiority trial, you will be seeing more and more because new emerging treatment, new technologies, maybe like a cheaper drug available. Um, so it's a, it's a good way to do an analysis or trial for like um, new treatments available. Again, um, you have to look at when you use the placebos, uh, uh, when you know there's a benefit already, you cannot take that benefit away from the patient. So you cannot do a placebo trial, which is a very unethical thing to do. So um, non-inferior tri trial is going to be more, you will see more and more in the future. Thank you so much for watching our presentation today. We'll be back with another presentation soon.